Hi, Steve Gale here. So today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a repository on GitHub and um, we're to host some PHP uh, and my SQL, uh, SQL files. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that into Visual Studio Code and we're going to use Visual Studio Code to edit our PHP code and uh, also deploy that code, first of all, to uh, a WAMP server, which is stored locally. And then afterwards, we'll deploy to a, um, to a, uh, a VM, a uh, Ubuntu server VM. So we'll get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've logged into my GitHub repository and I'm going to go to repositories. And I'm going to go to new repository and I'll give it a name. I'll call it 2020 um, WSP for web server programming. And um, that's available and I'll leave it as public. And I'll say initialize this repository with a readme. So I'll do that because I'm not importing from an existing repository, I'm creating a new one. And I will then, I'll just put a description in, uh, 2020, whoops, 20 web systems programming and I'll create that repository. So once I've created the repository, then what I can do is I can go and I can grab the, and you can see it's created the readme.md file, but at this stage it's it's empty and that's fine. And that's the only file that's sitting in that repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the code section and I'm going to grab this um, clone URL and I'll copy that clone URL. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code and I've got Visual Studio Code running here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, source control um, icon on the left hand side here. And I'll click on that and I'm going to go and clone repository. So I'll click on the clone repository. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the, um, the uh, GitHub clone URL that I've got from my uh, GitHub account and I'll click enter. And it was looking for a folder, a select repository location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and navigate to, um, to the C drive. And I'm going to go to WAMP server, WAMP64, www. And I'm going to select this as my folder location. So what I'll do is I'll just click on www. And I'll use this as my select repository location. So I'll click on there and it'll clone into that repository. And then what I'll do is I'll open that cloned repository and it should have created a folder 2020 WSP inside of that area. So I'll install the update later. So if I go to File Explorer and I drag this over here, you can see here I've got C drive, WAMP64 www and what's been created is this folder 2020 WSP. So this is now my cloned repository and it's in the root of the WAMP server. So what that means is that any files that I create, any PHP files that I create in here will be accessible from the web root, from the Apache web root, which is www. So I'll be able to navigate to those PHP or HTML files using this path. Okay, so what we can do next is um, once we've done a clone is we can make a change. So in making a change, what I'll do is I'll create a new folder in here and I'll call this folder um, PHP. What I need to do here is new folder and SQL, but I need to delete, oops, rename that. I want a capital L, SQ capital L. And in this PHP file, I want to delete the SQL, but the, the GUI doesn't want it, want to let me do it. So um, um, delete, yeah, move to recycle bin. Yes, that's good. 
So here I've got the basic framework for where I'm going to put my, my PHP code. And I'm going to create another folder down here. So I'll just go new folder and I'll call it SH. And this will be where I'll put my deployment shell scripts for my Ubuntu server. So basically what I'm doing is I'm setting up my, my framework here. So now that I've done this, what I want to do, if I go back to my repository here, and I do an update on my repository, what you will see is that those changes that I've made locally haven't been updated. So what I want to do is I want to update those changes back into my into my uh, GitHub repository. So what I do is I go back to here and um, click on here and there's no changes because there's no files. So actually what I have to do before I can update into the repository, I need to, um, I need to create some some files. So what I'll do is I'll go into um, I'll go into SQL first of all, and I'll just I'll click in here, and I'll just create a file. I'll just call it um, uh, db one SQL. And I won't put anything in there for the moment, but I'll just create the file. Um, in the um, in PHP, um, I'll just um, create a file in here. So new file, and I'll say uh, create create database.php. Here we go. Enter. And still nothing in here. But see now you can see here I've got I've got two pending changes because I've created two files. And what I need to be able what I want to be able to do is even though those files are still empty, I want to be able to update those back into, into my repository because my repository is the um, cloud-based repository in GitHub is basically the um, the master, the master of where this information is stored. So the easiest first thing I need to do to do that is I need to go in and I need to I need to um, stage the changes. So I can stage these changes, stage all changes, or I can stage by using the plus I can stage changes individually. So these changes are now staged. The next thing I need to do is I need to commit them with the tick. But before I do that, I'll do a message and I'll just put um, first commit. For whatever me I can put any message any any message there and these changes have now been committed so you can see here down the bottom here these are my these are my pending changes so what it's saying is I, I need to do an upload because something has changed but nothing nothing has changed in the in the in the master repository in the download so what I'm going to do is I'm going to synchronize the changes and this action will push and pull commits to the origin master which is what I want so the origin master is the um, the GitHub repository, so I'll hit OK on that, and it's going to prompt me for some permissions. Eventually, no. Oh, my credentials must be already stored there. Um, so it's it must have cached my credentials, which is great because I didn't have to didn't have to put them in. So if I now have a look here, you can see here that there's no changes to synchronize. Um, if I hit OK, nothing happens and nothing comes down either. So if I go back to if I go back to GitHub here and if I do a refresh, what you can see here now is I've got my SQL folder and which can, has my create DB SQL file and, and the, with the message first commit. And I should also have my PHP folder which with my create database PHP and with the message first commit. Okay, so now if I make any changes in here, say for the readme.md, um, if I want to edit the readme.md and um, here I say, um, let's put something in, in the in documentation. So I've got um, uh, folder P HP 
contains PHP code, folder SQL contains SQL queries. Folder SH contains uh, deployment scripts. For and that'll be inside the VM. So what I can do is I can I can commit those changes. I can commit them directly to the master branch. I can I can put um, messages if I want, but I'll just go straight and commit those changes. And you can see here that um, my readme.md has that information in it. Not pro perfectly formatted. It probably needs a bit of reformatting. But now, if I go back to here in GitHub, if I have a look at my files, if I look at my readme.md, that information isn't there. So what I need to do is I then need to update my local repository from the master repository. And the most convenient way to do that is to synchronize changes. And this will do a, uh, this will do a pull. And by doing a pull, what it will do is it'll update the, um, the uh, readme.md file from the, um, from the origin master. Okay, so that's pretty much all we're going to cover in this video. And in the next video, what we'll look at doing is we'll look at how we can deploy our PHP code to um, a Ubuntu um, server.